Good evening. My name is Keith Cole, and I serve as the Executive Director for the Wolf River Conservancy. I want to welcome you all here tonight for our first virtual lecture for 2022. It is part of our ongoing environmental education outreach. And we're excited about learning more about tonight's program, Climbing in Community with Memphis Rocks. As we hear from representatives of one family, Memphis, the nonprofit which supports the rock climbing gym, Memphis Rocks, and other programs at Soulsville. Tonight's lecture is not only our first for 2022, but it also marks the beginning of this year's Wolf River Restoration Series. The Wolf River Restoration Series is a series of events, starting with tonight's lecture, that continues through uh, Earth Day in April of this year. It combines both physical and virtual activities that all go to support the Wolf River Conservancy's conservation mission. The first of these series for our volunteer activities will be this Monday, January 17th at Eppingway segment of the Wolf River Greenway. We will begin at 10 o'clock and end at noon. We have a variety of activities that we'll be doing to help improve the green space of the Eppingway segment of the Wolf River Greenway. To learn more about the activity for this coming Monday and all the Wolf River Restoration Series activities, please feel free to visit wolfriver.org. Most importantly, we also wanna share with you that we're pleased that Brother International has returned as our presenting sponsor for the Wolf River Restoration Series this year. If you don't know Brother International, let me share with you, they are a very socially conscious corporation based in Bartlett, Tennessee, since 1985, it's the corporate headquarters for the North American Brother International Company. They're very socially conscious uh, in how they go about their practices, their manufacturing practices, they're very sustainable, and they're a great partner of ours. And we appreciate their support, not only financially, but all the great volunteer effort that Brother International has given us over the years. We also wanna acknowledge our presenting sponsors for this year's lecture series. Our corporate sponsor is Buckman. And our foundational sponsor is the Crawford Howard Family Foundation. And at this time, we'd like to also acknowledge our 2022 benefactors, AutoZone, Brother International, Bank of America, FedEx, the Hyde Family Foundation, International Paper, Jim Carrey Subaru, and Marine Container Technologies. We appreciate the tremendous support from all those entities for our mission 365 days out of the year. But of course, we appreciate all of our supporters, corporations, community partners, and individuals and volunteers that help us deliver on our mission, which is to conserve and enhance the Wolf River and its watershed as a sustainable natural resource. Thank you for your help. We could not do it without you. As always, any gift of any size will help us in our delivering on our mission. And I think during the night, there'll be a link uh, shared uh, on the uh, chat box about how you can do that online. Some housekeeping details, we ask that you do not uh, record tonight's uh, lecture. We will be recording it for you. And if you registered for tonight's program, whether you're here in attendance or missed it, you'll get an email later that shares with you how you can access the recorded video as well. If you have questions during the evening, our education director, Kathy Justice, will be monitoring the Q&A box uh, for questions. And then at the end of the program, she'll be addressing those questions to our presenters. And for our presenters, we are very happy to share with you. We have two very qualified speakers tonight that we're excited to hear more from. First is Sarah Gray, serv serving as the director of One Family Memphis. Previously, Sarah served in various leadership capacities in four different YMCAs throughout the United States. Her personal mission is to ensure every individual has the opportunities and resources needed to reach their full potential. Sarah is a current doctoral candidate studying organizational leadership at Southeastern University. She holds an MS and a BA degree from Louisiana State University. As a born and raised Memphian and an LSU graduate, Sarah loves watching and supporting both of her Tiger teams. So Sarah, thank you for being here tonight. We also have Jarman Johnson. Jarman was born and raised in South Memphis and has been serving the community for the past three years. Jarman was first introduced to the Memphis Rocks organization by his mother, Florence Johnson, as a high schooler. Since then, Jarman has transitioned from a volunteer to part-time staff and now as the full-time outreach coordinator 
for One Family Memphis, Memphis Rocks. Jarman lives and breathes the mission of One Family Memphis and Memphis Rocks. He serves as an amazing community connector and storyteller and a talented storyteller. Please help me welcome Sarah and Jarman to our virtual stage. Sarah and Jarman, thank you. Welcome. Thank, thank you, guys. You. We are so excited to be here with you tonight. Thank you for joining us, whether you're joining us right now live, or you'll be watching the recording version. Thank you for, for being a part of this. I will say I just had a scare. My internet just went out for like, I don't know, two seconds. So hopefully everything goes well from here on out. But um, I'm Sarah and this is Jermon. How are you doing? You learn more about him and his amazing story in just a little bit. But for now, let me share my screen and share the PowerPoint. Perfect. So tonight we're going to talk about a little bit about who we are. Uh, you see um, us on the screen, and that's how we tell our stories. I'm really excited to show you a couple of videos. You'll hear more about Jermon and his amazing story here at Memphis Rocks. Learn about how you can get involved. And of course, we'll have time for plenty of questions. So who are we? Um, we are an organization that is located in Soulsville, South Memphis. I have a map here of our location. We're about 10 minutes from downtown, 10 minutes from Midtown, um, but located near, uh, on Macklemore near Bellevue. So our founder is Tom Shadiak. Tom Shadiak is a Hollywood director. You might have seen some of his movies like Bruce Almighty, uh, Brian Banks, The Nutty Professor. If you don't like his jokes, don't tell me. You know, it's okay. Um, but anyhow, um, he founded this and created the concept um, of Memphis Rocks and One Family Memphis and intentionally put it in the South Memphis community to make a difference. So we'll talk more about that in a second, but we intentionally placed here our campus on the right-hand side of the bottom picture. That is uh, what a beautiful art mural is. That is Memphis Rocks and that is a climbing gym and so much more. That's where a climbing gym is. And the left-hand side, that building, that is actually where the One Family Memphis offices are located. So if you can see this top balcony, uh, the top left-hand side is actually the office that we're in right now. So that makes up our campus along with the educational food garden that we have in the back. So um, you may be wondering like, what's the deal with One Family and Memphis Rocks? Like, who are you? I'm confused by the names. Sometimes we're confused too, but essentially One Family Memphis is the umbrella organization for Memphis Rocks and also Mountaintop Media. Uh, most of our work, about 99% of our work is actually focused in uh, Memphis Rocks. So we won't talk about Mountaintop Media tonight because that's for the future, but um, that's the association. One Family Memphis uh, does their fundraising, and uh, marketing communications for Memphis Rocks, but we're all one organization. So a little bit more about Memphis Rocks and what makes us unique. So that beautiful building, it's about 32,000 square feet. It's a traditional climbing gym with a top rope area and a bouldering section. We have a cardio and weight area. We also have a juice bar that's named Juice Almighty after the movie Bruce Almighty. Um, we have a community closet in an educational food garden. And we'll talk about those two, two things more later. But at Rocks, we view climbing as a metaphor to overcoming life's obstacles. We believe that walls are made for climbing and that we climb higher when we climb together. So what makes us unique? So we are a pay what you can afford model. So that means you enter into Memphis rocks and you want to, you know, go climbing, you want to learn how to climb, you want to access a cardio weight, so you want to go into the juice bar, whatever it may be, uh, we have a few different options for you. You can come in and pay the traditional step fee, um, which is still far below most gyms in the area, or you can pay what you can. So that means whether it is 
a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, you pay what you can at the point of entry. Now, if you cannot afford to pay anything at all, then you can volunteer your time in exchange for a membership, right? So if you volunteer five hours a month, that equals a monthly membership. And it's not just about volunteering here, right? Like you can volunteer at Wolf River Conservancy and that counts towards your hours and you get a membership. So we like to say that we are redefining currency Currency is not what you have in your pocket, but it's about your willingness to give to others. We're also diversifying rock climbing. Rock climbing, if you guys are rock climbers, you probably know um, it's a very expensive sport to get into. The gear is expensive, traveling to actually climb rock somewhere because you can't climb here in Memphis. Um, it's expensive, right? And so it's historically a white elitist sport. And the reason why we are situated here in South Memphis is to make an impact there that we're diversifying rock climbing and exposing this amazing sport to other people that look different than me, right? Um, and it's so that we can serve the community and other needs. So really, someone said it, it's a quote that we're just a community, community center disguised as a gym. And that really sticks with me because it's so true, right? Uh, we're not really a gym, we're a community center. So a little bit more about Memphis Rocks before we talk about our impact programs. We have high ropes and a bouldering section. The high ropes basically put a harness on, you climb up the wall, about 35 feet tall. A bouldering, no harness required. Almost anybody, any age can do it. Um, and if you fall, you just fall really onto a soft mat. Um, so we have those two options within the facility, along with cardio and weights. We have climbing classes. We have a, a youth climbing team, which is a soul center's picture right here. And then um, we also, oh, let me highlight that. Actually, to the right, this is Micah Winkle. Micah is um, the World Cup champion in his division of the paraclimbing. Uh, paraclimbing. So essentially, Micah had, um, he was diagnosed with cancer at a young age, and his family moved here to go to St. Jude. And it, thankfully, thank God, he is in remission right now. But uh, because of the cancer, he is operating about 50% capacity in one of his legs. And so um, he is officially a paraclimber. There's different levels of paraclimbing. And he competed at regionals made it to nationals, is the national champion, went to the World Cup and is now the World Cup champion in paraclimbing. So amazing success story for not only St. Jude, but for us and for him, for everybody involved. We also have the summit team, which is this group picture right here. This is pre-COVID. Um, unfortunately, COVID um, has stopped to their travels, but they are planning on taking a trip this year. So the summit team is a three year long program. It's for high schoolers. You enter the program and every year, it sounds the like COVID years, every year you take a trip to summit a mountain. So this year they're planning to go to Mount Rainier, which is outside of Seattle, Washington in July. So um, at the end of the three years, they all graduate together and then we accept a new class of students. And new for us is WOW, which stands for Women on the Wall. It's a women's only climbing group uh, that meets on Wednesdays. It just, we just launched it about two months ago or so. Mm. And looking to expand that uh, with offering different competitions and really trying to make sure we branch out and serving the women. Because um, again, climbing is, um, you know, while it's white elitist, it's really male dominated as well. So making sure that everybody is comfortable coming to the gym. So let's get to the good stuff. So this is the good stuff. Um, Cause this is our, this is talks about our impact programs, right? Which is what makes us more than a climbing gym. And what makes us that community center that's really just disguised as the gym. So we have volunteer program that I referenced earlier. 
You can volunteer doing community cleanups. You can volunteer in an education or food garden. You can volunteer in our cafe. You can pretty much volunteer anywhere. Anywhere will take you. Um, and we have a young man named Daniel who oversees that program. We also have a community closet. The community closet and the educational food garden and the lunch program all started because of COVID. So we shut down in March of 2020. And the staff, to be honest, was extremely bored. And I was like, how can we serve the community? They can't come in our gym. What do we need? What do we need to do? So all three of those things started because of COVID and have, they have continued because the need continues to be there. The community closet is again, a pay what you can model um, that you come in and you can uh, gain access to all the basic necessities, food, cleaning products, clothes. We have a whole baby room that's pretty spectacular. Um, household items, you name it, you probably have it at some point during the year, but it's a pay what you can model. We also have an education of food garden, which is pictured, pictured here as well. We have six raised beds and we just built a greenhouse with the support of a donor. And so uh, the goal of the educational food garden is not only to educate our community about sustainable ways that they can uh, produce their own fruits and vegetables, but um, and also have access because we are in a food desert here in South Memphis. We had one grocery store that closed at the end of 2021. So we are the closest grocery store to us is Kroger on Union. If you've been to that Kroger, right. you don't want to go back. Yeah, it's do. too crowded. <laughs> but anyways, um, <laughs> so um, we are in a food desert. So it's important that we're providing individuals with the knowledge to grow their own fruits and vegetables if that's something they desire to do. We also have a really ambitious goal of making a whole cafe completely sustainable based off of the produce from the garden. So all of our fruits and vegetables, all, uh, all of our smoothies, all of our wraps, all of that will be sustained by the fruits and vegetables from the garden. We have a lunch program, Monday through Friday, we give out sack lunches, 50 a day. Um, and those go every single day. Uh, we have a volunteer, uh, different volunteer every single day that comes and volunteers to hand out those free lunches. We have other community initiatives such as a Christmas toy drive, Christmas in July drive, a winter coat drive. We partner with Faith and Family Services to do a diaper and baby wipe drive in the spring. So lots of different community initiatives. When we had that terrible snowstorm in February, we were here giving out water because our community actually did not have water. Um, so whatever the need is, we try to fulfill those needs. We have a really cool program called the Period Power Program. This makes people uncomfortable to talk about sometimes. But um, did you know that one in three girls or women will actually miss school or work because of their period? Because right mom goes to the store to buy food and she can either buy, you know, milk and eggs or she can buy menstrual products. Most of the time she buys the, milks and the, the milk and the eggs, right? And so those girls or those women miss school or work. So we have a program here that we provide a three month supply free of charge to anybody that says they have a need. So we serve about 200 women every, every quarter with those products. And we are now the largest distributor of menstrual products in Memphis in collaboration with Sister Supply. So it's a pretty cool program. We have an after school program here that meets uh, we are located right next to Soulsville Charter School, which is for middle schoolers and high schoolers. So they come over after school and participate in our after school program. And again, it's a pay what you can model for that as well. Board counseling is on site. So one of the biggest needs that we've identified since our existence is mental health. And I could say that's probably the biggest need in almost every community, but I don't want to speak for every community, but definitely definitely for ours. And so it was important to bring in an expert. While we are not the experts on that, we do know somebody. So 
that are now in our facility downstairs right below uh, office here. So I would love to show you, um, let's see, time. I would love to show you one video. <clears throat> we have time, potentially a second one later. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of, <clears throat> one of the ways that we have had success in sharing our mission and what we do is through the screen, right? And we've been really fortunate to partner with individuals that have the ability to support those sorts of things. And so in 2020, like right before COVID, uh, we decided to take a group of uh, young people to Bozeman, Montana to go ice climbing. And uh, that's what the first trailer I'm gonna show you is about. But essentially we wanted to go in contact Anchor, who's one of the most famous climbers in the world, and Manoa and Fred Campbell, they're all climbers. They all wanted to go with us. And Real Rock, which is a film production company that does mostly outdoor climbing movies, tagged along with us to film. One of the interesting things I would say is that most of Real Rock's films just capture like climbing, right? Uh, well, this film shows you climbing it's not about climbing right it's about people's lives that are being changed because of exposure to something that they've had had the opportunity to be exposed to right it's about achievement in a different sort of way not achievement on the wall but achievement off the wall so uh, for them it was really surprising uh, to capture a film like this so without any uh, further <laughs> hesitation I would love to share this film I will note if your sound or your video is a little wonky, just stick with us. This is only not even three minutes long. We will come back and we will send a link to this afterwards so you can watch it on your own. So if your sound or video makes, causes trouble, just know that. Give me one second and I'm gonna switch everything over to show the video. I'm gonna start the video and then I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. So just so you know that's happening. Are you in a dark place? You don't see the light. But when you reach a peak in your life, now you're in a place where you see a whole different world. All these mountains call your name.
we actually have time to show you another video and I'll talk about it afterwards. We're going to cut it a little early just because I know there's some sound issues and I want you guys to be able to experience the full video. So we'll send a link out to it and that way you can experience it. Um, but that video was um, funded by Black Diamond, which is an outdoor brand company. So um, again, like we, we just had success in telling our story and what we do through the screen, right? Because only so many people can come here and experience it um, in person. However, videos really resonate with the audience and, and tells your story and puts somebody's face, somebody's real face. And Aiden, who you saw in that last video, Aiden is one of our most promising climbers. He's an amazing young man with a huge heart. He's been here since we opened, right? And he's here every day uh, during COVID when school was completely remote. He came here as his mom would drop him off in the morning and he would do school work most of the time at least and uh, on his computer and then climb between breaks. And our staff would be there to help him with you know, math homework or, or science. And he's an amazingly talented artist too. So just one of the young kids that we get to work with are really fortunate enough to work with. Um, and again, it's not really about climbing. It's about somebody's, somebody's life and, and seeing them succeed in life. So now I'm going to stop talking and you're going to hear from the man of the hour, Jermon. And Jermon's going to share a little bit with you about who he is and, and what rocks means to him. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Jermon Johnson and I'm a part of the outreach and development team here at Memphis Rocks. Uh, as you can see on the screen, that lovely lady is Florence Johnson and uh, she's the one that introduced me to this place in uh, 2019. Uh, I heard about it through my mom. It was my last year of high school and it sounded like one of the most ridiculous things in the world to me because there's no mountains in Memphis. I've never seen a mountain in my life. I've never climbed one. I've, jumped a couple gates and climbed some trees growing up but just the the idea of mountain climbing in memphis was ridiculous to me uh so just like any other person when you hear something new you either deny it or don't want to have nothing to do with it and i was like nah, i don't, don't want to do that and uh she kind of pushed me uh they gave her a job at this place um and i seen how much they cared about her and, and she pushed me to come to this place each and every day. So I had to give it a try. Now, just like everyone is watching and viewing us right now, I, I really want you all to at least try to come here once. 
and experience this place up close because I was that person uh, who just didn't even want to be here. I didn't even think of the idea of this place being fun. I didn't think I'd be here three years later. When I came inside of this place, uh, I immediately fell in love because I come from an environment uh, that surrounds Memphis Rocks. There's a, a, a very gritty and hard place. You, you'll find some love here, but it's more gritty and hard than love. And to just have a soft spot in the middle of a hard place was amazing for me as a young kid growing up with uh, one mom in a, an environment like this. Um, I met John Hawk, who is the manager here at Memphis Rocks. He was the first person to help me climb. And I was 18 years old at the time. And um, one of the biggest things I remember on coming into the gym on my first day is uh, completing the route and my first time out of 18 years hear, hearing an adult man tell me he was proud of me. Uh, it made me want to come to this place. I instantly fell in love with this place because I never heard that before as a young male coming from a low income environment uh, where you see a lot of people scratching. Uh, you see the moms with sons just like me who is getting into gang violence and trying to survive in these in these streets, but doesn't have any guidance. You know, doesn't have any leaders uh, to teach them the right things. They have leaders, but they only teach them the things they know. So, to have someone that for one doesn't look like me um, tell me he was proud of me, and also just have a male tell me he was proud of me, uh, I became very emotional. You know, I almost wanted to tear up. I, in fact, I did. I kind of got off the wall and went inside the restroom and, and kind of teared up a little bit because that did something to me. Um, I started off here as a general staff member. After climbing that day, I applied for a job two weeks after that, and uh, they immediately gave me a job. I think it was because of my, my waterworks, my tears, they kind of seen that. But uh, they gave me a job and I, I loved it uh, because I got the opportunity before I even got the position I'm in now on general staff to work with kids that was just like me once upon a time. I got to work with kids that were a little confused about their life. As in, I wanna do better, but I'm only seeing worse. I need another way out of the environment I am, I'm in. Mean, um, you know, so often we hear these kids or these people are just a product of their environment, but no one ever asks the question, who made the environment for the product? And um, I just feel like you put a new, a new environment for these kids like this place, it'll, it'll help a lot of these children out, you know. So when I began to work at General Staff at 18, um, I seen how kids looked up to me. I heard kids say they looked up to me. And that also created butterflies in my stomach because uh, throughout my life, I have did a, a couple of things wrong, you know, not because I wanted to, just because we were in a low income community and uh, my mom was working three jobs, struggling to do her best. So you had to survive in a community like this. So having young kids tell me at uh, 18 that, you know, they were proud of me. And, um, you know, you're a person that I look up to. What you're doing is awesome. I see you taking trips. I see you climbing. This is weird, but it's fun at the same time. You know, that does something to you. It makes you want to keep going. It makes you want to thrive. It makes you want to uh, stop those kids from making the same mistakes that you made. Um, sadly, uh, within two weeks after I had graduated high school, I was still working at high. I was still in high school when I was working at Memphis Rocks. Two weeks after I graduated, uh, my mother Florence Jazz, uh, Johnson tragically passed away. Um, but I felt like. You know, she wanted me here at this place and uh, she wanted me to thrive. She seen me thrive. She seen me help people. And as you all can see, you see the smile on her face. Uh, she knew this was a place that her son would be safe at. You know, I'm, I'm one of her only sons. She has two daughters. She knew this is a place where I can thrive and um, be better for myself and not just be better for myself, but also teach other young kids that there is another way. You know, you don't have to always reach out uh, to what's in front of you. Um, there are things above 
and beyond what's in front of you and you can reach those goals just with a couple of resources like these. But uh, my mom passed away and it was one of the hardest things of my life. Uh, she worked her last day at Rocks. The day she passed, she, she finished her whole shift. Uh, she went home and she passed away. Um, now, our company name is One Family Memphis. And a lot of people use slogans, uh, just as slogans and, and don't actually put any action behind them. But 2019, February 13th, the day my mother passed away, um, that is the day that I truly understood the mission and knew that they were serious about being one family Memphis. From Tom Shaniak, from the last person on a janitorial staff, the exact same day my mother passed, everyone was in the hospital. Every staff member, a couple of customers that knew her. And my mom worked as a, a person that was on a janitorial staff to some businesses. That's the lowest like position you can work. And to have uh, the respect and uh, the love and honor of her staff members and also her boss, just to, to show me support and be there in the chapel with me. You know, it was so many people that some of us even had to stand outside of the chapel within the hospital uh, before COVID. It just, it showed me a lot about this place. And that's the reason I wanted to keep working here, keep thriving here, because I want to show other people what I seen that night. I want to show other people, uh, I like to kind of call this place uh, the seed of God. And uh, the people are the fruits that are growing the building itself is the seed that was planted in the garden, uh, which is this community that was deserted. This is this is a community that was lied to, deserted. This building was supposed to be a grocery store, as Sarah said. It was a food desert for years. I watched my mom struggle for years and uh, have to catch the bus to Union and uh, Third Street, 20 minutes, 15 minutes away. Watched my mom have to get birthday cakes and catch the matter bus to my schools uh, because they didn't have uh correct transportation or they didn't have grocery stores that were close enough uh, so she can just walk to them. So we we need a place like this. Uh, I say this place is the seed and the people are the fruits. The people are growing. The people are growing. We're loving one another and we're learning to work with each other and also uh, use our own resources. There's also another thing I love about this place um, in that one family mission um, family help each other. You know, when you're a family member or you're a part of a family, you, you expect your family member to call on you instead of other people. And that's why the word, once again, why family is so important because we show people how to empower themselves. We show people, hey, you can garden like this. Hey, we have uh, finance classes. Hey, we have a mental health facility. Uh, facility. We put the power into our people. Uh, a lot of other facilities, only do things for profit. But here at One Family, we care more about the people that's coming through the doors. And uh, that was one of the biggest things my mom seen before passing. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons she still wanted me here. Uh, so I began, um, after my mom passed, I began my new part as outreach and development where now I get to create platforms uh, for young entrepreneurs within our community. There were that maybe uh, were once gang members or made the wrong decisions or just getting out of prison. I get to show them a fair route they can go. Um, we create events like open mic nights, uh, uh, pop up shops where young entrepreneurs from our community that make clothes and don't want to work a regular job and have faith in themselves. We let them use our campus for free and also give them a free photo shoot and promote their pop-up shop weeks before doing it at our campus. Uh, we also partner with the GIF program where we bring um, young juvenile uh, delinquents to our uh, establishment and show them that you are much more than the charge you were given. You are just a young person that made a mistake and we don't wanna judge you on it. That's not your characteristics. Uh, we also partner with another program that gives people who uh, are just getting out of incarceration um jobs at $15 an hour and also giving them insurance and if they can save up to $2,000 um that company will actually match that with them so um I'm, I'm just grateful you know that this place chose me I'll say that 
You know, I, I say I chose this place, but I'm grateful that this place chose me and it landed in a place that needed it. Uh, a lot of places and nonprofits that you see um, are in a lot of expensive places. Uh, I like to call South Memphis kind of a dime community. You'll look over a dime when you got a quarter. It's not that much anymore. So, you know, we just want to, we want to show people that we polished. Uh, we want to show people that this is not the place to look over, but this is the place to contribute to. Um, this is the place to be a part of because we have much more than climbing to offer. Uh, you know, you may come in here and become a hero to some child, or you may come in here and find a hero. But that's the beauty of this place. Uh, so I appreciate you all. Thank you, Jermon. Uh, I, I will just add, right? Like, I was born and raised here in Memphis and went away for college and had the opportunity to come back here for this for this job, back to hometown. And young people like Jermon are the reason why, right? Like, amazing story. I would say I'm technically his boss and I hate that word, but I have learned more from him than he will probably ever learn from me. So um, just one of the many young people who hopefully we have an impact on and they have an impact on us, right? It's vice versa. It's not just about what we can do for them. It's what they're doing for us. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. And just the last slide before we get to questions is like, how can you get involved, right? Um, you know, we say join the movement. Um, and that's just come visit us, like come check us out, come climb, if you don't know how to climb, we can teach you how to climb. Um, I was not a climber either, I'm still really not a climber, but we can teach you how to climb, right? And like be a part of the movement, come volunteer. Um, all of our volunteer opportunities are posted on Volunteer Odyssey. Come just volunteer your time, give us Saturday, um, but not this Saturday, because you need to be at Wolf River Conservancy. But, but Come give, come give some time, right, and volunteer. Um, and I would just, if if you feel compelled, donate. Um, I'm not going to stick there because it's not what it's about, right? Like, it's about just being a part of the movement. So I would encourage you to come, check it out, and, and see see how it feels for you. And with that, I have questions. So um, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to stop sharing so you can see our faces. And a larger screen. Okay, thank you guys so much. This is Kathy, and um, yeah, that was so inspiring. I'm just so impressed by all the work you guys are doing in the community. It's kind of endless. It's, it's like a miracle <laughs> there in South Memphis. Um, really wonderful. So um, I'm going to wait for people to put a few questions in, but I have a few of my own. First, I'm the education director here, so I'm curious about your after school program, exactly what does that entail? Um, you know, since I couldn't see that part of the video very well, um, just tell me more about it. Yeah, definitely. So it's a uh, modeled after like a traditional after school program where the kids come in and school, as soon as school is out, uh, most of them walk over from Soulsville Charter School across the street mm -hmm. and participate in a variety of activities, obviously homework assistance and tutoring if needed. Uh, climbing, garden, arts and crafts, volunteerism as well. We try to embed that in everything that we do. And it also depends on the interests um, and talents as well. So um, we're looking to grow that program. So please spread the word. Um, but it's a tremendous program that, again, is a, a pay what you can model. So there's no barriers to entry and no barriers to ensure that kids have the resources they need after school for not only homework assistance, but also like a safe space to belong and thrive. Mm -hmm. That's that's wonderful. Um, let's see, I've got, let me, okay, guys, put your questions in the Q&A, but here, here we go. Hey. Kathy, for some reason, I, this is Mark, I can't get into Q&A, I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so here's one question um, for climbers. Uh, do you have any books that you would recommend on rock climbing or climbing in general? Anybody? Ooh, Lou, do you have any? Uh, honestly, I learned uh, climbing through watching and just climbing myself, like going outside. Uh, 
I would say personally, I, I've never read any rock climbing books, but the best way to learn is to just watch up close and personal and uh, just get a, a, some beta from some, pro, not professional, but people that have been climbing a couple years ahead of you. And uh, you'll be pretty fine. Learn by doing probably, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. And also a really good question is, how do people learn more about you? What is your website, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, so our website is memphisrocks.org. Uh, we also have one family, but I point everybody towards memphisrocks.org. And that gets you everything you need to get. Uh, volunteer opportunities, information about yoga, about a juice cafe, all of our programs. You can get it from memphisrocks.org. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Um, I'm also really curious about, I don't know how much you can share about funding like do you get grants how how is that how does that work for you guys yeah like like most nonprofits, we kind of hope and pray and this is yeah. no, no, no. i mean we are about 70 percent funded uh, through contributed revenue um so about 30 percent of our revenue comes from earned revenue which is on the gym science and membership fees and things like that mm -hmm. and the other 70 percent is a variety of funding uh, COVID was a little unique. Uh, we typically don't receive like state funding, but because of COVID, we, we did have some state funding there. But typically, it's all private donations and grants. Um, so just just a mix. We uh, launched a sustaining a monthly donor program. It was December of 2020. Is the same month that the movie Black Eyes came out, mm -hmm. and um, we literally went live with the monthly donor campaign like five minutes before the movie came yeah. out. Um, so, and we gained quite a few monthly donors. We have about 1,200 monthly donors. Uh, those are individuals that really ensure that our mission and work can continue to happen through their reoccurring donation. Um, so, but it's, it is definitely a mix of funds um, that comes through, you know, private and donation, uh, private and grants. Yeah. Okay, uh, and I will just tell you, just for your information, that I did not really know about Memphis Rocks until our last year's speaker, who mentioned you guys and just, you know, had worked, collaborated on a film. Um, so I, I really am glad that we're helping to get the word out there, because this is such an amazing effort. I'm just, it's just, uh, it blows me away. Let's see. Um, let me see if there are any more questions here. Oh, do you support, besides the climbing, what, I assume that you also support young filmmakers, right? Or, or maybe not Memphis Rock so much, but another organization? So we do, um, it's not as large. So we have another segment of our organization that's called Mountain Tap Media. And that's, um, the vision for that is much grander than what it is right now. Right. We would love to be a full service film studio that gives access to that sort of um, experience to everybody. Right. Because, again, it's it's a really hard industry to break into. Um, so we do things. So when Tom Shadiak, our founder, is involved in movies, we employ local uh, filmmakers to come alongside of us and participate. So Brian Banks, for example, right, that was a movie in conjunction with Mountaintop Media. And then a lot of the wonderful filmmaking you see, like Black Ice, um, some of that film was shot by somebody who was an employee here at One Family in Memphis. And so um, really our goal right now with filmmaking is just to give exposure and we'll see in the future where it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but Memphis Rocks has been um, really a pleasant surprise as far as the support that we've received that we focus all of our attention there and we'll see where it lands us in the future with mountaintop media right that's so great and uh, then I want to direct a question maybe the last one to Jarmond and wonder if he has a story about someone else that he finds especially inspiring your story itself is very inspiring and I want to say I'm so sorry to hear that your mother passed away because um, she must have been an amazing person. But I'm wondering if you have a, a favorite story about somebody else. You don't have to use any names or anything. Um, someone whose life has been changed by this place. 
a great a great friend of mine, and um, you will learn more about him uh, on the Memphis Rocks website. Uh, but uh, Salacio uh, is his name, and uh, hopefully you all will get a chance to meet him. But uh, me and him have a crazy story ourselves. Uh, growing up as kids, uh, we knew each other, went to school with each other, and both of us kind of fell into the gang activity life just because of the areas we grew up in. And he kind of was on the other side of the gang track, and I was on the other, if you, if you get my drift. So we wasn't always friends. Uh, but this place kind of helped us men um, that up, and just just his life is inspiring. Him being shot uh, with an assault rifle at the age of seventeen, almost losing his life, uh, being shot in the neck and in the arm, having a drink from a tube uh, to to eat food is an amazing thing to me. Um, him just getting teeth this year in braces because of Memphis Rocks is, is just amazing. But um, he has a, 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 a tremendous story, and you all will see more by story on Memphis Rocks, but that is a person that inspires me each and every day because I truly know where his background was, and I know the struggles he came from because we were both there. Um, and it's, it's, it's just amazing to see someone that you used to call a knucklehead and, you know, getting so much trouble with accomplish things and, you know, climb black ice, you know. So um, I'm always proud of him. And that's a person that continues to inspire me each and every day. Oh, that's a wonderful story. And I hope he's I hope he's fine now. I hope his health problems. And Jarman, oh, yeah. you're a wonderful spokesperson for this organization. Any nonprofit organization would be very proud to have you speaking for them. So Thank you're you lucky very, to, I think uh, One Family and Memphis Rocks are very lucky to have you. I really think, I really mean that. So, appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, a question has appeared here. Let me make sure I, okay. This is uh, from uh, Kelsey, our development director. So I, I mean, our uh, chief development officer, sorry, Kelsey. She says, I see similarities in how Memphis rocks and rock climbing is an outlet for those living in South Memphis and how the Wolf River Greenway is maybe an outlet to communities around the trail. So what advice would you give in bringing the community together as you have done so well here in South Memphis? What did that look like in the beginning for all of you? Uh, it's, it was kind of like a, a battle of tug of war. Um, you know, once again, when it's rock, we're in the heart of South Memphis, like literally Macklemore and Cotton, this is Soulsville community, this is the heart of South Memphis. So mm -hmm. when you put uh, a sport that is not familiar to the ethnicity group of people um, and also to the, to the community, you get a lot of people that do not want to be a part of it and automatically denies it. But uh, through the years, we have had so many people and it makes me feel so good. It makes me feel so awesome. Like so many people, um, they have been struggling with our, within our community before this place were here that I've seen personally struggle because I'm a, I'm a product of this community. Um, we've, we've helped, we've changed. And the advice I would give them is just try it out. Never be afraid to try something that's new. Never say no to something that seems different. It might change your life, you know? Uh, exposure is a big word that I love speaking. And uh, the, the advice I would give is just never be afraid to expose yourself to new things because it might be the new thing to, to uplift you and, and take you to another place. That's great advice. And, you know, we, uh, we have been trying to offer free uh, kayaking uh, instruction out on the lake in uh, the Raleigh area, close to the Greenway, and I hopefully it's somewhat like this climbing experience that people get a chance to try something they've never tried before. Yeah. So thank you both so much for a just very inspiring um, presentation. We really enjoyed it. Thank you to all the people who tuned in tonight, and I want to remind you that our service project on Martin Luther King Day is on Monday the 17th 
and you can sign up on our website. So thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank, thank you. you.